Hey, good afternoon there. One Tractor Man 44 here. My day's all done, but then uh, you never get any rest. There's no rest for the wicked, you know what I mean? That's what my dad always said. But at any rate, my son called me. I, I had to run down to his house. Fortunately, he only lives about a mile and a half away. Uh, they lost a little bit of water while they were taking showers and everything. So, I don't know if you know, y'all know anything much about uh, wells or anything, but uh, let me let me give you what little bit I know. Come on over this way a little bit and take a look over my shoulder. You'll have a control box on the wall, depending on the well pump you have. He's got one that's got a, gonna be a three wire pump, which means it's got a start winding and a run winding, and then you'll have a common wire that goes to them. So you have common and run and a start. So this just pops right off, and you'll see your wires right here. It's, it's uh, labeled L1 and L2, that's your incoming power. So the very first thing you wanna do is double check and make sure you have 240 volts right there. Uh, then you've got over here, you've got your uh, uh, R, Y, and B, which is going to be the common, the run, and the start circuit. And if you look down here, you can actually trace that out. I don't know how good you all with wiring diagrams, but you can actually see how this all works. The start winding is the red, and then uh, run is the, the black one, and then yellow is the, uh, the going to be the common. And, of course, there's your line leads coming into it right there. So right now, first thing we want to do, uh, and the first thing that you want to suspect, number one, if you have power, you want to suspect that either the capacitor itself or the relay is going to be bad. In the old days, these used to be what they called a potential relay because voltage is potential. And what would happen is it would read the actual voltage that's induced in the start winding as the motor is ramping up to RPM, and they would match that potential, that induced voltage, to the voltage relay that would open a set of normally closed contacts at a specific point to take the start capacitor out of the starting circuit. Okay, now this here is going to be a solid state or a thermistor type, so it's only going to leave the start capacitor in the circuit momentarily until it senses that little bit of a temperature, and the thermistor will then at that point take the capacitor out of the circuit. So the things that we have the potential is going to be a bad capacitor, a bad relay, or the pump motor itself has locked up uh, whatever. Now it's blowing the breaker, but it's blowing the breaker on over amperage, it's not blowing the breaker because of a short. If it was blowing the breaker because of a short, we have no alternative but to, but to throw the pump away or dip, pull the pump and then install a replacement pump. However, it can still be locked up and tripping the breaker, but if it's drawing that LRA or lock rotor amperage, you need to check and make sure that the capacitor is or is not bad before you condemn the pump because the start capacitor diminishes that lock rotor amperage gives that extra starting torque to get that motor up and running and getting up to full RPM and then everything is cool. So we're going to go ahead and check the capacitor. So anyway, again we talked about this being a start capacitor and because a start capacitor can actually hold a voltage charge just to make sure you won't get zapped, you just want to cross that, uh, cross that off. Okay. Sometimes there's a bleed resistor across it. The bleed resistor will take care of that uh, uh, bleeding off that, that charge if it's there. This one does not have a bleed resistor. Some people say, oh, don't short them out. You're going to kill the capacitor. You're going to shorten the life expectancy. And you know what? I've been doing this for 40 some odd years, and I say that's a bunch of baloney. So the next thing you need to do is come up with a meter that will read microfarad or an analog meter. But we're going to use a digital meter that's going to read microfarad. And if the capacitor checks good, this is our 130 microfarad capacitor, we should be able to read 130 microfarads plus or minus a few percent right on this right on the meter I know you can't read it from uh, from the screen but we're showing 19.96 nanofarad which is essentially nothing so this indicates that the capacitor is open if the capacitor is open it's not allowing the start winding to be energized and it's trying to start with nothing but the run winding so what we'll do is we'll double check this meter because we can, and use a second meter that also has a capacitance, capacitance setting, and we'll settle on 400 microfarad, and again, chart this out to make sure that any voltage that could possibly be in there will be, uh, will be removed. A point to remember too, the ohm scale, or the capacitance check, utilizes the battery voltage that's inside the meter to charge the capacitor to give you that reading. So by me using this meter here, there's I potentially charge that capacitor, which is why I need to discharge it before I try to read it again. So now we've discharged it. 
I'm going to put the second meter to test the first meter on the 400 microfarad scale and we're going to go ahead and check this out. And if you can focus on that, you can see it reads one tenth of one microfarad, which is essentially, <laughs> for lack of a better term, 19 nanofarads, which is absolutely nothing. So, enter the picture, my little test kit that I keep uh, by my own well at home. I've got this so I can actually hang this down off the bottom and remotely connect those five terminals so I can use an amp probe and check if the relay is doing its job or if the relay is not doing its job, if the capacitor is doing its job or not. But what we'll do is we'll check my capacitor first. And if this will work, I'll just leave mine as a spare until we can get a replacement. So we're going to verify that we're on the microfarad scale. We're going to take my meter. Right now what it's doing with the flashes across there, it's actually charging the, the capacitor. My capacitor is reading 123.9 microfarads. So that's within 10% of the rating of the, the microfarad rating of the capacitor. So we can assume this capacitor is in fact good. So what we'll do is we will pop my capacitor out of this relay box. We're still not out of the water because he could definitely have a pump failure due to the capacitor being bad and it's stalling and trying to start a number of times drawing lock rotor amp and go ahead and burn the pump up itself. So we could still have a failure there. But we don't know that until we replace this and pop it back in, turn the power on, see what happens. He doesn't know it yet, but our local place refuses to sell the individual components to the start box. They force you to buy the entire start box. However, I'll go to my shelf over in my shop and I'll take a look and see if I've got a replacement capacitor that'll fit the confines of this and is of a microfarad reading that we need. If you notice the way this is, these have these little jab clips right here. So you'll hook the top on the box and you get it right down here and you snap it in. But you don't want to do it with the power on because you'll arc and spark across here and you could possibly damage something. And if nothing else, you burn up some of the uh, contacts in your uh, in your control box. Okay, now what I should have told you guys before when I was sticking my fingers up there really, really close, we had already turned the power off as soon as I came in the basement. We verified that the power was off. So I'm just doing that again right now. I'm on uh, AC voltage and we're reading uh, eight tenths of one volt. So I should have told you that before. I had definitely had the power off. And if you look at it, you can see some black spots inside there. Somebody in the past, prior to him buying the house, has actually pulled this on and put it back in with the power on. And the power is on, it's going to be calling for the well pump to run. So this has got a little lip on the back side, and that actually clips down in behind this. And if you want, you can take a flashlight, look under there, you can see all five of those little things are ready to stab right in. And you get it right there like that, and you pop it in like that, one screw back in place. So now we're going to go ahead and turn the power back on, and we're going to verify that it's going to run or not. But i got to get my, volt, my amp probe ready first. Okay, hopefully we can uh, focus on this right here. But we got the wire peeled back off of the controller, and i got my amp probe right in here, and we should be able to see the... Uh, we should be able to see that momentary lock rotor amp. We should see it settle back down to about 8 or 9 amps, whatever it's going to decide it wants to draw, if it starts up and runs the way it's supposed to. Go ahead, turn it on, Ty. There we go, 7.54 amps. I felt the water pipe jiggle. It's uh, running. It's doing what it's supposed to do. Well, we can, see the, we can see the gauge slowly climbing in pressure. So it's working. It's working for now. He got lucky this time. Uh, we're not going to be pulling a well tomorrow. That was going to be another video if we did because we don't even know how deep this one is. Uh, mine's 400, 410 feet or 420 feet. I don't know. We've had it out of the ground a couple of times. It's not fun, but uh, it's, it's definitely something we can do. We don't even know if this one here is in PVC. We assume it's going to be. If that's the case, it'd be much easier. But if it's like the old ones and it's one inch galvanized pipe, uh, that creates a bit of a problem. But it's it's. Not, not anything beyond our abilities. We've done a number of them in the past. But at any rate, now you understand exactly what you do to troubleshoot. Now I ain't telling you that you need to go and do that. You know, as, uh, like I always say, don't do as I say and definitely don't do the things that I do. But because you do have to have a few specialty tools, you know, it's kind of nice to have a, an ammeter, a clamp on amp probe, and also a, a digital DVOM that's capable of reading the microfarads and all that kind of stuff, you know. Uh, and if you have an analog, you read the capacitors entirely different with an analog meter. 
but it's just as reliable. But at any rate, it's raised up to pressure, it's shut off. I've got to bend these wires back down in place and put the cap back on. And you know what? This is Tractor Man 44, and I am out of here, guys.